What's up guys, Rave13 here and welcome to another Gunpla Review Special Series, the Wu Fei series from the Gundam Wing series. Okay, so I started this uh, review a couple of weeks ago and we have finally reached almost the end. <laughs> I still got one more video. Okay, so what we have here today is the high grade 1100 scale Shenlong Gundam. Chang Wu Fei's uh, first Gundam in the Mobile Suit Gundam series. Okay, so um, I actually started uh, building Wu Face Gundam, the 1100 series, high grade, by starting with Nataku here, the green one, and uh, Altran, the middle one, and Shenlong, the last one. So rather than starting from the beginning, I started from the last. And I actually learned a lot. And you guys will hear that from me on the next video. Trust me, you guys will like it. Okay, so let's get straight to it, shall we? So this unit was actually released back in 1995. The age where Bandai had been working very hard to polish their skills in plastic model kits. As you guys have, can see here, I've actually done some work. I've actually did some panel line. I actually first time literally used all the stickers so I get the blue here the gold the white part yep and one thing I can definitely say is there's not a whole lot of uh, stickers for this guy here as you guys have seen on my previous video okay so mobility wise um, as always this unit or the series itself um, actually do have limited mobility because this is a, an old kit so there's gonna be certain poses that you cannot do uh, that the, um, the newer line like the master grade series can do okay so as you guys can see we have um, some beam effects here the beam grave on the manual but I say this is a beam glaive we get the dragon here and um, we get the, the basic uh, shield here, which is actually really nice. There's no sticker for this guy here. Okay, let's start off with the weapon, the beam grave. And uh, it's actually not bad. It actually get the beam effect, which is really nice. And um, it's just one straight line. There you go. And now uh, for the other green effect is uh, let's go to the dragon fang next okay so the dragon fang is this one here this extends if you guys watch the Gundam series you guys will know what I'm talking about and it actually comes with its own effects which I will show you guys later on okay so let's talk about the stickers here I wasn't actually too impressed as always with the stickers but since there's minimal stickers, I ended up using all of them. Uh, one thing I do like about this is uh, the blue one here. It actually brought out its um, full potential. But the problem is it started peeling off. Which is typical for paper stickers. And this area here was polished originally. But it's slowly peeling up also. So the stickers for this unit is not the best yeah it actually kind of sucks um but uh, well worth it because there's not a whole lot now for the gold part here um the painted gold here it's actually just painted yeah like i mentioned it's painted so um one false move you'll actually peel off the gold and it actually did because um uh, since it's painted over, it's actually black on uh, black underneath. So you'll actually have to use a gold marker to fix the situation or something similar. For me, I actually managed to fix that issue by using a marker that did the work. Now for panel lining, I actually used some uh, the basic Gundam marker here, which is not bad. I completely enjoyed it. Now. The next part I want to mention to you guys are the panel lines. This unit, or in this series, uh, or 
during this time, they actually implemented a lot of panel lines here. So you actually really don't have to scribe it. All you have to do is use a gunpla marker to actually bring out its full potential. I actually did that as you guys can see. And I actually like that. This is actually the Shenlong itself. It does not actually have a whole lot of uh, panel lines. Or the way they did it is they made it just about right compared to the other ones. And here is the back section here. Okay. So now that uh, we've talked about stickers and panel lines, now let's talk about the seam lines here. The seam lines, you will always notice the seam lines in the middle of the leg here. And one of the reasons why they added the uh, panel lines to hide it. Simple sanding and glue should fix the issue. Um, you can see the seam lines on the legs, on the, on the arms, on the shoulders, and the noobs. Well, you can fix that if um, you want to. Uh, it's just too big. You can sand it properly. Now, the other part that I actually want to point out is Dave uh, Bandai have actually used the old mold. So there's some, there's actually imperfections. The imperfections is actually on this right feet here. I've actually scribed a line here because it did not mold it properly. And I've noticed that on the other kits. So they kind of recycled certain parts. Okay, so the next part that I want to talk about is um, the beam gl glaive here. Now, I've actually used a putty here because it doesn't actually fit well. It will fall off. That's the other part. You can actually fit it properly by pushing this uh, part here, but the rest of the part is a little bit too skinny to attach properly. Just giving you guys a heads up. So, um... Putting this in place is limited by that much. So anything above here, it's uh, already too skinny. Yeah. Okay, now let's talk about mobility. Okay, now we will start off with the feet here. Now mobility is limited. Okay, see this one here? It, this one can move but left and right so this uh, armor here is already pre-molded so you can't move it now the next part is the whole leg itself okay that's how far it can go and the part just fell off we can ignore that for a second so mobility is actually limited for the legs but you can actually post this the leg actually is actually stiff. I actually had no issue with this one here at all. As you guys can see, it can stand on its own. Now, as you guys can see, it can only go so far at the back, up front. Well, without that piece of armor that just fell off, it gives more mobility. Now for the skirts, it's always movable. You can remove it if you want to in certain poses. And the front skirt, uh, that's how far it can go yeah I heard some snapping sound there <laughs> now for the waist the waist can do 360 degree turn no issue there nothing's hitting unless you put the beam glaive there which you can actually move around also now the torso is actually static but let's do uh, test out the head here okay the head the so far it can go it can't even look up it can partially look down now now the fin here is actually solid so it won't fall off easily there's a lot of panel lines also here which is not bad now for the arms the arms can actually do a 360 degree no issue yeah the stickers is kind of peeling off here and another part just fell off actually we can ignore that that kind of looks good without that uh, other skirt part okay and um, the shield you can actually take out easily 
Okay, there you go. It's just a simple match there, no issues at all. And uh, now both arms are actually different. But uh, this one here, for the left arm, the shoulders are movable, 360 degree. You can actually move it uh, any way you want. No issues there for the back part. As you guys can see there, not bad at all. Now for the thrusters here, it does not move. It stays immobile. Okay, so for the hand, well, the basic hand for that uh, for a classic kit, it can move, but there's no special attachment there. And there's another part also, the polycaps attach. Now you can actually do a basic uh, fix here for the joints here, if you don't want to see that. It should be very simple. Actually, I'll have to plan that out. <laughs> Okay, now let's uh, lay this guy for a second. It's time for me to show you guys the dragon. You guys have already seen the pictures, but uh, I want to show it to you guys now. You actually got to pull the hand out. Now, what I usually do for the dragon is I actually pull out the whole part there. Now, the right shoulder is empty. There's uh, an attachment there. So what I do, is I actually just extend it, pull the dragon out, I pulled out the hand there, there you go, and then I uh, put it back down, remember you actually got to move it underneath there, so you can actually pull it down, easy, and uh, usually it's actually positioned Okay, it's actually positioned this way most of the time and if you actually try to pull it down you might actually break the piece so that's why I always pull it out to extend it rather than leaving it in the shoulder armor okay and there you go there's the dragon now mobility wise okay let's put this guy back together not bad the this dragon can actually extend up without any issue it doesn't fall down compared to the other two here actually compared to Nataku um, Altran actually got a solid uh, arm base also so there's no loose parts here it's actually very solid you can actually pose it uh, any way you want that uh, permits that the kit permits you to okay now let me show you how to let's take that uh, part again how to put the effect parts here now usually it's supposed to, it's supposed to support out flames here but I don't know why they did this I guess uh, just to make it look like more of a dragon Which is, don't get me wrong, it's nice. I actually like it. <laughs> now, there's a stickers also for the eyes there. Or you can paint that over any way you want to. Okay. Not bad, actually. The fastest review that they've ever done. I actually, actually enjoyed it. Literally enjoyed it. So for the price range, well, let's talk about that. But first off, here's a quick uh, hollow piece of the torso of the Shenlong. Okay, I want to show you guys something here. And there you go, hollow. Okay, this is actually quite nice. Um, got to admit it. It's an old kit, yes, not the best quality out there, yes, but um, it's a 96 kit, so Bandai is still polishing their skills. One thing I got to admit is, if you do lose this or get this stolen, well, one way to put this is you can actually put, get a piece of paper, write your name, contact info, anything you want to put 
in this hollow part here. That's uh, your proof of ownership or maybe as a mail. And um, yeah, so there you go. Someone steals your work or so, um, and you found it and they want to argue. Well, all you have to do is open this up and there you go. Proof of ownership and they will go to jail. Charge for theft. <laughs> Quite nice actually. Now let's just put this together again. Now it's going to be a little bit harder to actually take this apart, but hey, better be safe than sorry. Okay, so I forgot to mention this one piece here. This is actually a piece of the Master Grade Action Base. Fits perfectly to the Shenlong here, so, so you guys got more options to pose it. Hands down, no issues at all. Okay, now there's another thing I do want to mention uh, to you guys also is uh, there's going to be certain parts that you will actually have to paint to make it look good, especially with the dragon here, maybe the vents at the back. It's your choice anyway, but overall this is actually a really good kit already just by uh, putting the stickers on and adding panel line. It actually brought out its full potential and as you guys can see, the dragon has not slumped yet. Which is really, really nice. Okay, now let's get to the point here, shall we? So I actually purchased this a couple years ago. It's been in my backlogs for a long time. And the question is, is this worth purchasing? For a 1995 kit, it's actually ahead of its time. There's actually not a whole lot of issue with this unit, except for the seam lines and nubs, and certain areas that you will have to paint over. The stickers aren't the best. For me, I'm nostalgic, so I actually really enjoyed building this because Gundam Wing is actually the first series that I actually watch in the Gundam universe. So for the price itself, worth it. Now, if you started building Gunpla at the, um, just a couple years ago or in this 2000s, I can actually advise you guys to actually purchase this kit to try out the classic. And trust me, you will not regret it. I highly advise this unit here. And um, yeah, highly advisable. That's all I can say. You can actually experiment on it the way you want it. And um, I forgot that the, the stickers are actually quite nice. As you guys have seen on the shoulder, that is a sticker. Okay, so do is there anything else I have to say about this unit here? Actually, there's nothing. It's actually a really good kit. Highly advisable to purchase. You guys can try it out. As of making this video, Hobby Link Japan's uh, site, they are currently back ordered for the Shenlong here. So um, other sites, you can possibly purchase it, but the price will vary. So it can be somewhere around 20 Canadian dollars and above. Maybe shipping included or without shipping included separately. Okay, so that is all I got now. So um, for next week, we will be doing a side-by-side -side comparison of Shenlong here, Altran, and Nataku. Not for their... We're just going to be doing a comparison of the weapons and how it was built for each one. What are their flaws and differences? That will be the final chapter of the Wu Fei series. Unless I can get the Master Grade. Actually, I do have the Master Grade Shenlong. Okay, that is all I got now. Um, this is Rave 13. Have a good day, good night, afternoon, wherever you are.